Hey church, we're in a series right now called We Are Love Church, and really we're just rallying around the name change that we recently went through. So really the title of the sermon represents the fact that we are Love Church now. <laughs> so. Exactly. Our, our mission statement is, has been, is experience and express the love of God. It's who we are. It's what we're talking about. Thanks for tuning in. See ya. So we've been doing a series called We Are Love Church. And, and talking about, you know, just kind of the mission of our church. Does anybody know the mission of this church? I think you do. It's to experience and to express the love of God. To experience and to express. And, and I, I like to say this, that it's, it's, in that, it's kind of in that order, you know? Because first you've got to experience Him, and then you can go and express, you know, what, what He's done in your life. Now, in Ephesians 3, there's a, there's a prayer here I've been going to, and it's one of Paul's prayers. You know, there's several prayers throughout the New Testament. You know, when Paul, Paul was, must have been a praying kind of guy, because it seems like every time he wrote a letter, he includes some kind of prayer in it, you know, especially in the, the go eat popcorn scriptures. Do you know where they are? The go eat popcorn, Galatians, uh, Ephesians 4. Philippians, Colossians. Yeah, go eat popcorn. You know, anyway. <laughs> You know, it is daylight savings time. <laughs> but anyway, here in Ephesians 3, you know, there's one. I'm just going to go right to verse 17. He, he's, he's praying for the people there at Ephesus, praying for us, praying that we'd, you know, see God fully in our lives. But he prays this, that we'd be rooted and grounded in love. Another version says that we'd have both feet planted firmly on love. You know, I think it's just the key for Christian living is, is to experience and to express this love, to have our feet planted firmly, to let our roots go deeply into love. And really, you know, doing that, living like that, it affects everything in life. It, do, it just does. You know, if Christian life's been hard, then, then stop for a minute and just, just take, a, take a chill and then let God show you the steps. You know, because he didn't make this thing to be hard. He didn't make this thing to be some drudgery, like, oh, I never measure up. Blah, 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 blah. Hey, it's not about that. He made you. And, and, uh, and, and he's equipped you. Praise the Lord. So um, let's see. Where are we going to go today? I, I always pick and choose who the message is, probably. Keeps the media department on their toes. They never know what scripture I'm going to pull up next. But, but uh, you know, basically, I just want to just say this, that, that the Christian life, you know, and successful Christian living is boiled down to this, is learning to live from the inside out, okay? God did a work in you and me the, the very nanosecond we got born again. We came into Christ, and he made us new on the inside. There's a verse that we've been, been reading lately that says that he infused his love into us. He poured his love into us. If you go Old King James, it says this, he, the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost who's given to us. Anybody ever read that scripture? Anybody mind flip out? Shed abroad in my heart. What in the world? God, what are you doing? You know? But, but that's why we read other translations too, to put it all together. And then you go back and read it and go, wow, I get it. But, but it's, it's like something he does in each one of us as he puts love on the inside of us. Love to live by. Um, what I've realized, and you know, I find this in the New Testament as well, that before I came to Christ, you know, and, and really the whole world outside of Christ, it, it, it's like ruled by outward pressure. It's ruled by people around you. It's ruled by, by you know, what they're seeing on social media. It's ruled by, by how the world is going for them. It's all this stuff on the outside trying to squeeze us into a mold and make us just carbon copies of everybody else. People fall into pressure. You know, because everybody else is doing it. You know, they, you know, I remember one time we had, uh, we were over at my parents' house. This was many years ago. And they were serving dinner for some, some relatives, you know, and Dana and I were there. There was some, like, cousins of mine that were over. And, and uh, they had Dana and I um, set the table or put the stuff out on the table. What do you call that when you put stuff on the table? Set the table, right? Yeah. 
Anyway, and it was dessert time. So Dana, Dana can be really sneaky, you know? She looks like she's just being calm, cool, and collected, but I'm telling you, in that little mind, she's thinking up stuff, and yeah. Anyway, she says, Paul, let's do this. So we were serving pie. And so she took everybody's plate of pie before they were there, and she turned it so that the pointy part was going away from them. <laughs> What's wrong with that, huh? What's wrong with that? And we just sat there and watched, and everybody sat down and turn their plate around. <laughs> well, what, I mean, does it taste different when you eat the pointy part first? You know? What's up with that? But it's like, this is how it's got to be. So everybody's going to have pie this week, and you're going to eat the other way. I know, I know, Pastor Stephen loves pie. Kara, not so much. She doesn't love pie so much. She just says, she says, I don't care which way you eat it. I don't like it. But anyway, anyway, all right, we're going there. Food in the service, yeah, all right. So, so you know, there's this stuff, and even in Romans 12, you know, we won't turn there. It says, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold, but be transformed from within. I think that's Romans 12, too, in the, the Phillips Bible. It says, don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold. See, that's what the world around us tries to do. It tries to pressure us and to squeeze us into this certain form, this certain look. You know, everybody, do you remember, remember uh, growing up, maybe some of you didn't have this happen, but, but remember when bell bottoms came out? You know? I mean, people wore bell bottoms, and, and when they first came out, this I was in sixth grade when that when people started to wear bell bottoms, and 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 my good friend called me up on the phone. He got bell bottoms for Christmas, you know. Oh yeah, I got some bell bottoms. I thought, well, that's weird. And then all of a sudden, before I knew it, everybody was wearing bell bottoms. And if you wore straight pants, what was wrong with you? I mean, don't you watch Ed, watch Ed Sullivan? Didn't you see the Beatles? They had on bell bottom pants, and everybody else is wearing bell bottom pants. Oh, it's not like that. It's the world trying to squeeze you into mold. God, God, though, is so cool that he doesn't try to squeeze you into any kind of mold. He doesn't try to make you religious. He doesn't try to make you churchified. He doesn't try to make you speak Christianese. We do all that on our own. What he does is he changes this on the inside, and he says, all right, guys, now learn to live from there. That's as simple as it is. He says, just learn to live from this place in here, this place in your heart. And, and so, you know, I was, I was, again, reading my Bible this week, my treasure map to God and all this, and, and I just was seeing this, that there's like two things that just are like distinctive of Christians, you know? Two things that you look at and you go, wow, that's a mark of a Christian. And, and one of them, you know, we'll read this in, in uh, I probably blew right by all these scriptures. In John 13, Jesus said this. He said, uh, 34, he said, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, uh, as I have loved you, that you also would love one another, and by this all will know you're my disciples, if you have love one for another. So that's one of the distinctive things about a Christian is there's this love on the inside of us, this love that's meant to enjoy, this love that's meant to share. And people see that in your life and they go, wow, there's something different about them. I remember one of the first times I, I ever went like, well, it wasn't even one of the first. It was the first time I ever went without this guy named Vern Norton. You guys ever heard me tell Vern Norton stories? Anyway, Vern is a wild guy. He was... He, he went to prison for shooting somebody once and, and you know, used to beat people up all the time and he'd shoot them, shoot them, I mean, more than once. And uh, his wife got saved and, and brought him to church. And the first time she brought him to church, uh, it, this guy was preaching. In fact, it was Ed Dufresne. And, and, and Vern just got agitated. Just got agitated. If you've ever seen Vern, you're glad he's a Christian, you know. <laughs> And he looks like he's full of love now, but boy, you, you wouldn't want to run into him before that. And, and he, he, Vern got so agitated, he left the service. And he, he went outside. And he sat outside until right about the time the guy, this Ed, you know, Ed, Reverend Ed, was given the altar call. And an usher stepped out and said, hey, you might want to come in for this. He, he's, he's calling people up to, to get prayed for and things. And, and Vern just got in his head. He says, well, yeah, 
I'm going down there. And he walked down the aisle and clenched his fist. He was ready to go punch out the preacher. Can you, can you just envision that to those of you who know Vern? And, and, and he's just determined. He was going to walk up there and punch that guy right in the face. And he walked up there, and, and Ed saw him coming, and he pointed at him and just said, Jesus. And when he did, Vern fell right over, and he started weeping. And, and, and Ed got down and prayed with him, and Vern got saved. So anyway, I was gonna, the first time I ever went out witnessing or evangelizing with Vern, Kara was with me, and, and uh, we, we, we did it during a church service. We went out and we, we decided we'd go and evangelize. And that, have you ever done that? It can be a little bit intimidating if you haven't been doing it regularly. But I remember what Vern told us all is this. He said, you know what? We're not going out there to try to preach our doctrine to them. We're not going out there to try to, try to force them do anything. He said, all we're going to do is go out there and love people. And he said, if, if, if they turn us away, we say, oh, it's okay. And we go on to the next one, and we love them. And I, I remember when he said that, I thought, that's so easy. Why have I tried to make it so hard in my mind? I've got to have just the right thing to say at the right time. I've got to, you know, come back, you know, got to relate to them. No, you just got to love them. You got to love them. When people see you loving people, they see that Jesus is working in you. So the other thing that I see that's really a, a, a true, you know, a Christian, what Christianity is like, what, what, you know, living, this living from the inside stuff is about, you know, it's loving people. But then again, the other thing I see is that it's walking in faith. You out there? Faith, faith. You ever heard of faith? You know, uh, faith is, is believing in things that you don't always like Pastor Stephen says. We got these peepers here, but then we've got some peepers on the inside that Paul says, I pray that you'd start living, seeing things, not just with these peepers, but the ones inside you. These, the ones on the inside of you can show you information that'll change things out here. Isn't that wild? Isn't that crazy? Uh, don't you can write you can write these down you can google it really quick too but in Romans 117 Galatians 311 Hebrews 1038 and Habakkuk 2 and 4 I'm not going to read each one of these but I'm going to just tell you this that each one of these four places throughout the Bible Old and New Testament say the exact same thing they say this the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Now, who are the just? Does anybody know? The just is simply anyone who's in Christ. How do you get in Christ? You ask. You say, hey, I want in. And you get in. You receive what Jesus did for you. You know, I, I can't be just on my own. I can't, almost sounds like a country western song i'm not just just on anyway uh, but 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 you know i can't do this thing on my own merit i can't qualify myself jesus qualified me and because he qualified me i can believe in that and i can receive that and it makes me just it makes you just now if that wasn't enough in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, Paul says the same thing. Basically, he says this, talking about believers, he says we walk by faith and not by sight. So another way I could say that is he says, I walk by, by, by faith and not by things that I perceive with my physical senses. I walk by a higher sight, a higher vision. I walk by what God tells me and that's so has God ever told you anything that you couldn't see in the natural and you had to what you have to do you had to receive it by faith you had to take it in by faith this this is what Christianity life is like now in Romans chapter 11 if you if you haven't read it recently and you don't know exactly what's in Rome or did I say Romans Hebrews chapter 11 Hebrews um, it's, it's basically this, it's the whole chapter from beginning to end is all about faith. And more specifically, what the majority of the chapter is about is different people through the ages 
that have expressed this faith life in the earth. And God just gave it to us for examples of how we can live. But in, in Hebrews 11, 1, I'll read this one. It says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not seen. So that's what faith is. It's, it's, things, it's, the, it's the evidence of things we don't see. Uh, the, the Jordan translation turns out to be one of my favorites on this, this verse, and he said it this way, Faith is the turning of dreams into deeds. It's betting your life on the unseen realities. Wow. I love that one. It's betting your life on the unseen realities. Walking on something I don't see with these eyes, but I see him with these eyes. I know, I know. It's just like, again, I remember when I got born again, it was the first thing that was really real to me is, wow, God loves me. How did I know that? Did God just show up, you know, in, in, in my car and say, Paul, I want you to know I love you. Well, sort of he did, but he wasn't there like in physical. I didn't see him with my physical eyes, but in my heart, it was like I knew God's voice. I knew it was him, and I, he said, I love you, and it was like, wow. It changed me. It changed me. So uh, let me read this too in, in verse 6. This is another faith teaching verse. It says this, without faith, it's impossible to please him. He who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Can I read the Jordan again? It says this, without living by the unseen, it's impossible to get such approval. For everyone who's serious about the God life must stake everything on the fact that God is and that he amply rewards those who make him their quest. So here's what I would tell you about faith. Although, you know, I've heard a lot of faith teaching over the years, and, and, and there are some really good ones and faith principles that I've learned, but the essence of faith is this, is that you're connected with God. That you have a connection with Him. And real Bible faith is built on and based on a connection that you have with God. When you try to, or if you've tried to, go through the faith motions, you know, maybe you saw some things, maybe you even saw some of the people in Hebrews chapter 11 that did great things, you know. I mean, you know, Moses, he's out there, he's got a rod and he parts a sea, you know. I mean, how many think that's epic? I mean, let alone the beard the guy had. I mean, it's all cool, but, but I, mean, I mean, how many, you know, maybe you think, wow, he, he grabbed a rod. Where do I get this rod? How do I have a rod of my own? I can, I can part Lake Minoman, you know? <sighs> <sighs> no, it's not like that. It isn't about getting the special rod. It's about getting this special connection, this special relationship where you're doing life together. It's about this thing we've been talking about that the Christian life, the successful Christian life, is just simply learning to live from the inside out, okay? It's being real, it's being who you are. So I love this, I'm not gonna, I'm certainly not going to read every story in Hebrews chapter 11. Can I hear an amen? amen. <laughs> not this morning, okay? But, but I'll, I'll just take this one for example. The, I, I love that this is part of Hebrews chapter 11. Again, the great hall of faith, you might call it. And, and it's the story of Enoch. How many have heard of Enoch before? I think, you know, Enoch is a cool story. It's about a cool guy. I mean, what a name, Enoch. Wow, I like it. Uh, but, but Enoch... All that's really known about him, it isn't known that, you know, he, he fed the multitudes, healed the sick, or, 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 or gave, you know, offerings or anything like that. All that's really known about Enoch is just a few verses, and it says things like this, that he pleased God, that he walked with God, that he walked with God and all of a sudden he wasn't there because God took him. Wild. Wow, that's crazy, you know. Uh, let me read what Hebrews chapter 11 said in verse 5. It says, uh, yeah, it says just that. It says, Enoch by faith was taken away so that he didn't even see death. He wasn't found because God took him. And before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. 
He pleased God. So the days of Enoch were 365, it says in Genesis 5. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. I would say this, that if we are going to use faith on anything in our life, the most important thing to use our faith on would be to know God better. To have a more real connection with him, you know, and to see him in our daily life. You know, we, we do a thing on Thursday mornings called First Thing. It's over, over at the Raw Deal. It's Pastor Stevens in my second office. And, and uh, hey, you know, we, we meet there and we drink coffee, but we have an ongoing assignment for all of us. It doesn't mean if you didn't do the assignment, you can't come. It doesn't mean you get called on or anything like that. But we try to do this because we're trying to, to increase our, our, our consciousness of God in our life. And the, it's simple assignment. It's just this. Hey, did you see God move in your life this week? Did you see something that just made you go, wow. God's real. There is a God and he's real. And sometimes it's as simple as this. Wow, I watched the sunrise and it was incredible. Blew my mind. I looked at it. I said, wow, there is a God. But I would tell you guys, that would be a good assignment to have. Look around every day and try to see God in your life. Maybe, you know, one thing this week that hit me was like we had some, some scheduling and some appointments that just needed the grace of God smeared on them. You ever have things like that? Things like that, your face in life, you go, oh, I need you, Lord. And we walked through and was like, wow, praise the Lord. That was, that was just filled with, that's God. Acknowledge it. So, you know, I won't read all these here, but, but again, it goes about Noah, it goes about Abraham. I, I hate to even not talk about Abraham and Sarah, but I'm not going to this morning. You know, you get the privilege of digging into it on your own. What I've been talking about, though, is this, that it's a distinctive, a distinguishing mark of a Christian is that we walk in faith and that we walk in love. But if you will turn over to Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 6, I just want to point this out about these two things, about walking in love and walking in faith. And the, the simple thing is this, is that they work together. And that real faith, real Bible faith, the kind of faith we read about in Hebrews chapter 11, you know, works this way. It says this, it's, you know, there's some things in the beginning. It says, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails nothing, anything. You know, it isn't what we do. It's all about Jesus, okay? But, but he says this. This is the clincher. He says, but faith working through love. Faith working through love. So, so that phrase was just going off in me this week. Faith working through love. The old King James says, faith worketh by love. So we took out the if, but faith works by love. So I, I, I've heard this preached two different ways in my, my Christian life, in, in my, my last four decades. Um, I've heard it preached this, that real faith, you know, is going to love people. You know what? I 100% agree with that. I've heard it preached, and I've preached it this way, that real faith knows they're loved. You know what? I absolutely, 100% agree with that as well. Faith works by love. But I was seeing this week that it's kind of like our logo. And this is how faith works. This is how love works. This is how Christian life works. So you look at our logo. It says simply, love church. But the L and the E are, are a little radical, okay? They're a little out of the box, or in this case, they're a little out of the circle, okay? So the L comes up from above, and it's open, and the E goes off to the side, and it's open. And you see, this is how it works, is that you receive the love of God, and that love of God, once you've received it, enables you to go and give it. And that is exactly how the faith works, too. As you receive the love of God, as you receive all that he has, it enables you to go out and live it and express it to people. And this is what makes the Christian go around. All right? Real faith has experienced real love. Its roots go down deep. Again, in, in, in 1 Corinthians 13, 
I won't read this this morning either, but I'm going to just tell you. In 1 Corinthians 13, I, I usually, when I read chapter 13, I go right to verses 4 through 8 because it's a, it's a detailed description of what love is. It's a detailed description of the love God has for me and, and also of the love he's put in me to operate with. But the first couple verses of it talk about all these fantastic Christian actions but in every one of them, he says this, but if it doesn't have its roots in love, it doesn't mean anything. Isn't that something? Talking, I mean, it's talking epic things about like moving mountains. Has anybody ever moved a mountain? Well, you know, you know, he's talking about using your faith and things. But he says this, you could have such great faith that you could move a mountain. But if you don't have love, it doesn't mean anything. Wow. Everything we do comes back to this. God loves us so we can reach out and love people. Wow, mind blowing. Hey church family, Gary here. We wanna talk about some of the ways that you can give. One of the ways you can give is with the envelopes which are on the back of most of the chairs. Just grab an envelope, clearly print all the information on the back, and then drop it into the white boxes which are located near the doors in the sanctuary. Another way to give is with text messaging. So send a text message to 77977 saying, love giving, and then wait a second for the response, click the link, set the amount you wanna give, whether it's a reoccurring gift, and then hit give. Another way to give is on the website. Go to www.wearelovechurch.com. Up at the top, you're gonna to see a word saying give. Click that. You'll see a button that says click here to give. So go ahead and click it, and then it's going to take you to a page asking you the amount, whether it's a one-time gift or reoccurring gift. Go ahead and hit next, and then confirm. Another way you can give is with the Love Church app. You can download it from the iOS store or the Google Play store. Once it's installed, just open it up. You'll see a button that says Give. Tap that. Select the amount, whether it's a one-time gift or a reoccurring, and then hit Give.